The Macho Man has got something to say Ooh, here. Yeah, it's yeah, gonna yeah, be right now. Yeah. That live back on top of this one right there. Yeah, that's right there, boy. If anybody wants to go get a snack, now is the time. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I am Father Josh, and today I'm happy to be joined by the band formerly known as Hyperion's Horizon, now known as Hades Hand. It's a special Halloween episode, as you can see, and I thought, what better, better band to have on here than a band named after hell? So, uh, yeah, introduce yourself, guys. Well, my name is Eli, I play bass. Hello, I'm Terry, I play drums. My name is Nico, I do guitar and vocals. Uh, my name is Alex, I try not to suck. <laughs> <laughs> that hard. <laughs> and, and, on the, uh, and your day job is? Yeah, I play guitar as well. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are we, I think we're getting confused. <laughs> oh, you try not to suck and I play guitar? Oh, right. got it. Oh, yeah. The interview's going for everybody. Yeah, right. right cool. <laughs> so, um, a couple questions real quick, just for the people that either and maybe don't know who you are off stage or just don't know you. Um, thanks for watching, by the way. Incidentally, if you like watching local bands drink and have fun and talk with me, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And please feel free to, down in the comments, say who you would like to see on the show. Later on, we're going to be seeing them perform in front of my guitar wall. And uh, yeah. So, how long have you each been in Vegas? Any, whoever wants to start. I've been pretty much born and raised. We were born in Tucson, Arizona, but we, oh, uh, my brother and I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, there ain't nothing out there right now. So, but, uh, we have separate families. Oh, this, no, come on, so, that's a good college town. Yeah. It is. Well, we've been in Vegas for, I don't know, what, 50 years? Okay, Long, yeah. maybe we were raised in Vegas, so whatever. But in any case, how was uh, your Terry? Pretty much the same. I was raised here. I was born out in Colorado. And just stayed out here more or less. Jeez. I, I'm the weird one. I've only been here like 17 years. <laughs> I'm, Cal I'm Cali boy. I think I think yeah. we're right around the same time. Well, yeah. part Cali. When? When? when <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> um, I was born in SoCal, but I moved up to NorCal and I moved here from NorCal. But I'm 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 SoCal enough to call it San Bernardino. <laughs> <laughs> San Bernardino for those who don't know. Um, the layman's. I'm right. from Portland, Oregon. I, was, I moved down here when I was like 14. Nice. Yeah, we have a lot of friends that live in Tigard. Nice. And I grew up in Beaverton. I was literally in the suburb right next to uh, you. Yeah. Oh, and goodness. I was this close to moving there uh, with, and, and the, getting the family up there. And we just, and then some things fell into place. And it was like, well, kids in a great school now. So I guess we got to stay here now. Yeah. 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 And then one thing led to another. Wait, so the schools out here are good? Um, Where? She's in a charter school. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 This is the answer. <laughs> Shout out to Coral Academy School of Science and Math. Um, Keep teaching those science yeah. and maths. Oh, her school's amazing. Yeah. If, I, if I can just do a side with her real quick here. Yeah. All the charter schools way better than the public schools in Nevada. I'm sorry. Right. It's true. You know it. Right. If you know anything about CCSD, you know. But her. Write your local councilman. In, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, my kid in, in, in kindergarten, she came home with a list of invertebrates. In second grade, she's looking at a, a tablet, and I'm saying, what are you working on, honey? And she looks at it and goes, probability. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, that we, kid she is... She and uh... I have a podcast called How to Be a Llama, because she identifies as a llama. What are you going to do? <laughs> um, and, and she she was just... Uh, we just recorded an episode uh, that's going to drop tomorrow um, for with uh, a friend of hers that had a sleepover last night, and they were talking about how, oh, I learned like simple uh, equations and this and this, and they started going off, and I'm like, bye. Didn't get any of that in, at all in school. Okay. I, I, oh, wow. So I'm getting close to that point where I, I Google it. And he, and if I have to help her with homework, I'm like, let me get my phone. <laughs> right. So I, I, I know you haven't been Hades Hand for, for long. Right. How long were you Hyperion's Horizon before this? Uh, years. High school. Uh, Damon and I started this band when we were maybe like 17. I was 17. I think Damon was 15 at the time. Right on. And uh, so for years, it's been Hyperion's Horizon. What I, what I remember, a uh, little back history real quick. These two were in Hyperion's Horizon. These two are new to uh, Hades Hand, correct? Right. I was actually in Hyperion's Horizon as well. Were you? Yeah. Well, near near the end. Were you in the Was he at the NB Showcase? 
Uh, I don't believe you. No, I don't think I was there so, for that. No. Uh, faithful watchers know I used to front an indie rock band called The Suspense, and the second ever MV showcase, which I, I don't even think that's a thing anymore, but yeah, they were basically like, you know, every bunch of band, local bands, you get a set, show what you do, you can sell merch if you want, um, and it was at House of Blues, which was it's cool. Yeah, the, sound is, the sound there's amazing. Yeah, we right. got two sound yeah. people. You know, I love that. But uh, we did. A, we were on the same bill, uh, and uh, we opened. You didn't close, right? No. no. Some, yeah, some yeah. out of town band closed, I think. But it, um, usually our, it's a national act that does. Yeah, that. but I remember our, my DIY like um, you know like banner and all that stuff came from you guys. Running off there with your PVC little stand and your, right. and your, and your, right. your yeah. little vertical banners uh, with, with your sand. logo. Yes. Yeah. And you brought, did, I think, was it you that brought your own boxes to stand on so you weren't like stepping on the monitors? Yeah. 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 That's right. I was like, that's genius. That that's cool. awesome. We, we rigged it up. We put a fog machine in there. We put yep. a light in there. So we, uh, pretty, my, pretty my pops, cool. he's also an engineer. So he sat there and he put a, a momentary switch on it. So when you stood up on there, you could. Click your foot on the right end of the thing, and then make this line shine, light shine. Oh, like vent. Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. But right you on, step yeah. on the light, you step on the button, and the light would shine, so it would go off and it'd shine in your face. And nice. It's really cool. We still got the box at home. Yeah. Nice. Though it wasn't cool enough. Yeah. yeah. Now he's got switches to make them even cooler. Right on. <laughs> so that's, that's not me. <laughs> basically, um, I, it was a really cool show. I remember a lot of cool things like the Bo Hodges band. The drummer started playing guitar while he was playing drums. Yes, I know. Just like I remember going back to the green room, like you guys got to see this because <laughs> we had never seen that before. Um, I remember the uh, the venting in the green room was really good. He was, he was hitting the, he was hitting, <laughs> hitting the kick drum and playing, like yeah. He for whatever reason he he just grabbed an acoustic and he did a little Mumford and Sons by it, like that was him, and then the band was playing along. Oh, God, but we were just like. Ages ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was. It was a little over a decade ago. I know that much. Yeah, it was. So, ages ago. if you're a fan, uh, if you were a fan of Hyperion's Horizon, you, you already know that they, they took a hiatus for a while. They even disbanded a little bit, and uh, eventually came out and said, "We're Hades hands now." Hades hand. Sorry. Where did that name come from? <laughs> no. uh, we tried. We tried to keep, stick with the Greek mythology, but we want, also wanted to revamp it. We right. wanted to keep the HH going. We wanted to keep that. Smart. Yeah, exactly. We, we felt like there was a following and we still wanted to just push it forward. Uh, Hades Hand, Hyperion's Horizon, the, the whole beginning of that was like Hyperion was uh, a Greek titan that so really was. didn't have a whole lot of uh, like kick to him. And yeah. we felt like Hades was like... Well, it wasn't Hades. trending in ancient Greece. Oh, it just, just it wasn't. Everybody, just everybody knows, just everybody wasn't knows Hades. the word Hades. Exactly. Not everybody knows Hyperion's Horizon. So Hades just seemed like a, an awesome name to go off of. And Look, I think... What's funny is, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I was at Disneyland, California Adventureland. Oh. There is a theater there oh. called the Hyperion, and yeah. immediately I said, I thought about you guys, and I was like, I gotta get them on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and well, then it thanks, happened. Disney. Yes, <laughs> dreams come true, kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so thank the big mouth with the ears. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the Hades, it's Hades, yeah. singular, not plural, right? Yeah. Correct. Okay, cool. This is my Hades hand. Cool. Powder it up, right? Release it up. Release it up. Swing off the baby's hand. Are you getting no? <laughs> uh, if you don't cover hell, hell's bells, I, I don't know. Um, so, how long have you each been doing music individually? Um, I've been doing it like basically since I was ten. Uh -huh. What got you started? Um. First, I started playing guitar like any other basic person would do, and then my dad would yell at me. He's like, "No, your sister's doing that." Nice. I was like, "So you, you what am I gonna do?" He's like, "Here, here here's some bongos," and I started doing drums. Off that. I never wanted to be a barber. I wanted to be a lumberjack. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I look at my dad. I'm like, "I don't want to be nobody. I want to be something." Wow. <laughs> oh, offense to drummers. <laughs> Send all your hate now too. Um, <laughs> no. I didn't really take it serious until I was in high school. I, I started doing marching band. I started doing drumline. Um, I did jazz band all four years of nice. my high school years. Jazz so, band will do it. That would really yeah, get you. That's it gets down. me from like every genre possible. Then I pushed away from that and I focused on metal, rock, and then I stopped for a little bit. I was a truck driver, and then my other band I'm in got me back into drumming, and then I had these two hit me up, and I was like, oh, okay, welcome back. Welcome nice. Back. And I have listened to some of your uh, the Hades Hand stuff, and it definitely, like you said, is 
a departure from Hyperion's Horizon. It's definitely yeah. a new direction. Absolutely. Uh, it, it, and uh, I'm going to have some links down in the doobly-doo uh, for the Hades Hands <laughs> stuff, but you definitely should <laughs> check out Hyperion's Horizon um, as well because it it was it was driving. It was really, I liked it a lot. Um, and I was like, oh man, that's, I, I was bummed you, you broke up or you disbanded. Right. But when you came back, I listened, I was like, yes, this makes, this makes sense for who they are. Or at least who I can kind of guess who they are. Yeah, we kind of had time to grow, to learn. And right. I joined a band called Taking Dawn, went on to a couple of national yes. tours uh, with uh, uh, Adeline's right. Way. And I learned so much from them. So like, I was kind of like, uh, very confident, like everything that I learned, mm-hmm. we mean, uh, Nico conversing, like, okay, do we want to do this? Good? Like, yeah, we want to do this again. Like, we love music. Like, it's great going with other bands and learning everything like that, but it's not the same if it's like your own baby, your own project. You right. Know? It's, it's very different when you're, when you're playing for somebody else when when you're doing it for yourself, you know, it, it means that much more. Right. So I was like, let's, let's, let's get it back going. I learned a lot. He learned a lot over the years. You know, we're just practicing, driving it out, learning from different people. And then we're just like, let's, let's do it again. But like, I want to rebrand it. I want to do something different, something new. Right. You know, like, yeah, like, Hyper Ranger Icing, it's a, it's a great name, it's a great title, great logo. We kept the logo, but, like, um, I thought the name was, like, like, it was just, like, it's in the, it's it in the past. It doesn't it's exactly really, describe yeah. what you do. Exactly. That's the hard part when you're branding. I hate his hand, it's pretty, like, <laughs> we're not a country band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, we're not? <laughs> yeah, right. Come on, I'm just going to I'm um, very disappointed. So that way. Did you need my hand on my mouth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see myself. No, but da, 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 da. <laughs> oh well then. We uh, I, w- I was remiss. Welcome to my home. Forgot the uh, the traditional clink. Got some antifreeze right here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's right. not a joke. Seriously, so send help. Car. Straight from the car. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, guys. The worst drink we've got here is in his hand. <laughs> Mountain Dew. Well, you need to be cleaned out. Yeah. Uh, so then, uh, as far as um, how long you've been playing music, you two before high school, obviously. Yeah, right. Yeah, middle, okay. middle school. Well, actually, I, I started in middle school. So I mean, I started, that explains I, I, started, a lot. I started playing violin in like second grade. Right on. And then when I went into. Um, it was back in Tucson, Arizona, because they don't allow you to play musical instruments in second grade here in Vegas for whatever reason. But uh, uh, unless it's the recorder, yeah, right. hey, you got yeah. really, aka the devil's foot. Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I'm so glad my kid is out of that. Yeah. She's in it, sixth grade. That's a sin in song, to be honest. Oh. But but in any case, uh, we were in Tucson, Arizona, and uh, in Tucson, we uh, you were home. You get to be in third grade, and then you get to start playing a singer. Mm. But my parents fought and fought, and they let me go into the orchestra at second grade. And then so I, I began there. And then when I walked into this uh, the music store where I was getting my violin, mm-hmm. it was a row of guitars. And I was like, fuck violin. That guitar looks fucking badass. It's got two more play. streets. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the pretty. It was the pretty that got oh, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I had this flame fucking design going up on there, and I was like, that's what I want to play. So, but in case, I got the violin that day, because my parents like most of the fuck I didn't play the violin. Right. Uh, so, Culture. I, it's, yeah. so, <laughs> not even that. It was just like, that's what we're committed to. That's what we're getting. So I get the violin, and I'm playing that, and then we moved to Vegas, so I had to drop the violin. Why? Um, uh, there was no nobody to teach me really because of the age gap between okay. the elementary schools because I was in second grade and, and there was school district bullshit. Yeah. In any case, CSD. Write your local councilman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mo- moving forward, once I was able to play violin again, that's what I picked up. But then when I got into about sixth, seventh grade, I picked. Uh, my dad took me to a guitar store. We picked up a hundred dollar guitar. And that's all we did for about six months. Nice. My, my friends couldn't get me out of the house. Right. And so that see, was. See. Uh, Unlike most of you, my, my first instrument was piano, seven years old. See, that's and, cool. and, and, and I would kick myself to this day that I, I fell in love with guitar and I stopped doing guitar or piano. And, and, and when I went back to it, I was just like, I only remember like two songs. And I, it's, I, I don't, and I just don't have that stick to itiveness on piano. Like I did on guitar for some reason. It's, it's I don't know why. I because you don't get a distortion on. I, I think piano. guitar is a much easier to come by. But <laughs> at the same time, if you can play piano, uh, as my pop said, 
can play anything. If you can play piano, you can play anything. I must I must say from that story you just told, I am very disappointed that after the guitar store, it, the story didn't turn to. So I took my violin, I turned it sideways, yeah, and I just started oh, getting it. Okay, so to, to run off of that, my orchestra teacher, orchestra teacher was actually kind of pissed because I was coming out with Black Sabbath and fucking ACDC in the middle of fucking class yeah, right. on that bow. Like, like you couldn't stop me because those strings are actually tuned to a fifth. So yeah. if you tune them, you hit a power chord every fucking time. Every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And now there are now there are like string quartets doing that stuff and making money yeah. at it. So. Yep. Yeah, she was not the happiest teacher in the world, but it was still that. Right. <laughs> the thing, like you can't just like play rock and metal or play any uh, any genre of music. It has to come from the heart. You have to be made for it, love for it. Right. So. Jimi Hendrix, mm-hmm. play what you feel. Exactly. There you go. So, so, and, that's got, all it is right there. I got to break into a segue because Damon and I got in trouble in high school. We were in. We, <laughs> So I was an orchestra. No, Damon got, <laughs> that never happened. Boy. Damon got into a jazz band, and he's been playing bass in the jazz band for a while. And I was like, you know, we've been playing guitar and bass for a long time. I just never actually joined a high school mm-hmm. uh, thing involving the guitar. So I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna join the jazz band and be in a class with my brother. That was probably the worst best idea ever. Worst best. Worst best idea. Worst best idea, worst, yeah. worst best idea ever. Yeah. We pissed that teacher off so many he times. Hated. Yeah. The, 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 I can hear it already. You're like, remember this song? <laughs> yes. The the drummer of that band was uh, jamming out to the Trooper, ACDC, Metallica. I, They're like, we're supposed to be taking a test right now. I'm like, yeah, fuck you, man. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm like playing Metallica yeah. right yeah. now, man. And then it's like, can you play that scale? I was like, oh yeah, sure. We played it, and then he was like, ah, "Fuck it." All right, you guys got <laughs> it. He was like, like "Fuck you guys." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, yeah, be so, <laughs> so that brings up an interesting point. You two are brothers. Yeah. yeah. All your life. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, oh, man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a small uh, time. <laughs> <laughs> so, Unfortunately, yeah. Moving on. How long uh, have you been doing music? Uh, I've been playing music since I was about thirteen. I was I was playing baseball, and I. Uh, uh, was I made an all star team and I had two day practices and there was like two hours in between the practices and I couldn't go out and like skate or anything like that because if I tweaked an ankle or whatever my dad would have been pissed right and so my oldest brother played bass in a band in college called the Hot Beef Injectors <laughs> fucking nice uh, <laughs> yeah. so uh, also the name of my fantasy team. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my slogan every year changes. It usually has something to do with Star Wars, like the Return of the Beef or something like that. <laughs> uh, something, something hot beef. Yeah, but uh, so he uh, he got a job working for um, a uh, field turf company. With an install field turf, for okay. example, uh, Boise State, the blue turf. It, that was my rug in my room for many years because wow. he installed that. And when it was done, they had a bunch of extra whatever. Sure. And he thought, like, dude, how often are we going to see? A blue turf, right. you know what I'm saying? So I went through the process of like undoing it because it comes in like that thick and then you break it up with like this. They have a machine for it. Okay. And you break it up and it becomes little blades of grass. And uh, so I did that whole thing in my rug in my room. It was literally a piece of Boise State's field. That's hilarious. Yeah. And so uh, he, would, it was all over the country. So he was traveling a whole lot. And when that happened, uh, he left his base at home. And me being the little brother, thinking right. everything he does is cool. I picked up the bass and literally started thumping along and trying to figure it out. And then I don't know how it happened because uh, of you know, various reasons. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, like somewhere along the lines, I learned how to read tab. And once that happened, it was like a door opens. Yeah, You're like I can play the song. I can like. play anything yes. that I like. And right. then right. like me and my brother, we. Uh, Sorry, authority figures, but uh, we discovered illegally downloading music, and uh, we once that happened, it was like, dude, we had a yes. library that was just astronomical, and it was like, seriously, anything I could get my hands on. <laughs> Funny thing, guess what streaming service still to this day pays the most to artists? Really? Or uh, what one? Napster. No kidding. It's a, still a thing. They got ads. That was gonna be my guess. It. Guys, let's bring it back. What's let's bring back the Napster. What's <laughs> Napster? And just aged himself. <laughs> <laughs> I get on the youngest one. What's the Napster? Can somebody get him a sippy cup? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> because I'm dressed like a priest and I've got Hades' hand here, I'm gonna say Lars Ulrich can go to hell. 
You blew it! You did. You really did. You too, Carlos Santana. <laughs> uh, we understand why you did what you did. <clears throat> but you fucked it up. <laughs> History shows it didn't change a thing. You did. If you ever, if my, my wife told me, if, if for some reason you ever find yourself, if we ever find ourselves <clears throat> at a party or whatever, and, and Laura's Ulrich or Metallica's there. Ooh, sorry, wrong pipe. <coughs> right behind him. He was looking for the seat. Yeah. <laughs> she said, don't introduce me to Laura's Ulrich because I'll deck him. <clears throat> and my wife is almost as tall as me, so she would do it. She got, she's still, she's going to leave still, with the jab, still, right? And then, <laughs> bah! No. Maybe an out of you can. She, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> take that engagement ring and, and make an impression. Uh, <clears throat> we saw yeah. that at the Rob Zombie concert, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. She, there's this crazy chick. We're watching Rob Zombie. We're at the very front, and she had like rings and stuff. And like, something started <laughs> happy. Some oh, guy geez. started picking on her. And she went up swinging, and the ring caught the guy. He had a big jack. Yeah, no, yeah, no. It was bleeding. It's there, just like right? if you ever see two girls fighting in a bar, back up and oh. tuck everything in, because mm-hmm. it is just going to yeah. chew you yeah. up and spit you out the other side. Oh, fuck yeah. Especially if it's like, hold my earrings. Oh, shit. <laughs> so you sing two times too, man? Yeah. <laughs> no, man, I grew up in Victorville. <laughs> Aren't they cousins? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know how women from Arizona hold the beer? Uh, they give it to their man. No, but their earrings. Nice. <laughs> well, since we're going there, this is this this is a germane to a conversation we had off camera. Why do I tell you men wear gold chains? So I know where to stop shit. Hi oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Send your hate mail to room six hey, LB at hey, gmail.com. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Mm. Getting back to my job. Early musical influences. We kinda talked about that already in terms of just like how you got started doing the music, but what was the music that got you like jazz and got you like, hey, I I wanna play that or I wanna do that kind of music or whatever. Yeah. Well, if, hey, I may, if I may, go for it. Oh, he's gonna just <laughs> dive right on <laughs> in. <laughs> like, ah, all right. All right. The macho man has got something to say Ooh, here. Yeah. It's gonna be yeah. right oh, now. That's but right right back back on the top of this one right there. Yeah, that's right there, boy. If anybody <laughs> wants to go get a snack, now is the time. <laughs> After a Macho Man impression. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Iron Maiden, you know, that, that's uh, Steve Harris, he's the man. Flight 666, six, six, baby. So, like, I went and saw them in concert not too long ago mm-hmm. in Vegas. So they was, still are putting, I mean, they, amazing shows. All respect to Iron Maiden, they're show. still putting on amazing live shows. Mm-hmm. And, um, come to Vegas. <laughs> mm-hmm. Seriously. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, I run. Run. Mm-hmm. There's too many people here. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they're already done. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, seriously. Iron Maiden, Bruce, and the gang, Steve, if you're all listening, Steve, all come on down. They're gonna watch. <laughs> Alright, anybody else? Somebody share this with Iron Maiden. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> we wanna open up for them. Yeah, oh, right. oh, James. One day. <laughs> one day, one day. Maybe oh, yes. Uh, like Raven Age was opening up, and one of, I forget who who it was, but uh, one of the members, um, Raven Age is the son of one of the members from Iron Maiden. Oh, so, so it must be nice. Gig. Yeah, it must be nice. So, hey, Dad, can I go on tour with you? Yeah, sure. Well, to be fair, to be fair, did you guys see the Soul Stone Jacket? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, um, but to Raven be fair, Age, great band. If if if, you're, if Iron Maiden's gonna know. How good a band is for anybody? It's gonna be his kid. Absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely. Gonna be like, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Okay. I know you guys will. Man, no, they they taught him well because they right. played amazing. Right. They played amazing. Um. <laughs> next, early musical influences. Uh, I grew up on punk. Right. Like, literally. Oh, don't don't you do that? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What's punk? What genre of punk? All of it. What's like, the genre? See, what there's, there's genre? actually a lot of genres of punk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's the genre? It, it, it's a lot of the. You know what I'm saying? Really fast, but uh, no, it was literally it's just teenage angst, man. Like a lot of no effects. This, this, this was and this was before um, the grunge movement had started. Yeah, yeah. So that, because well, that was where the angst went. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's true. Suddenly, and, and suddenly, punk was more about social. Uh, I mean, well, it was always kind of about uh, calling call attention to social injustices and things like that. 
but but when grunge came along, <laughs> punk wasn't so much like you know, oi! It was more like, hey, pay attention to this. All right, <laughs> All right. now this is where it gets interesting <laughs> because I found out later in life that there was a message to all these punk songs. I was a bass player. Uh-huh. So, I don't know if you've heard of uh, uh, Matt Freeman from Rancid, but yep. that dude noodles. <laughs> like, yeah. he is on a whole nother level. And so it was like, when I started hearing stuff like that, I started going through and finding like all these bass players that I really, really enjoyed. Um, I'm a couple scotches deep, so I'm not going to remember all these bands, but my favorite punk band was the Vandals. Rancid was uh, awesome. Operation Ivy was awesome. Uh, and then, like, when we, me and my brother, uh, my brother was our, my first uh-huh. drummer. My brother and I. My brother and I. I'm oh, my dad. dad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Father my Josh. brother was my first drummer. Father Josh. And uh, so, like, when we when we started <laughs> discovering, uh, dude, I don't know if anybody remembers this, but uh, Yahoo Music back in the day. Yeah. Had Yahoo this thing. Music. That's well, no, no, no. It, it was like a place to find music videos. Yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I'm So it was like, it would just go. Right? And it would just loop and loop and loop. And it would guess at what you thought it thought you might right. like. Now, the algorithms and weren't really dialed in. Yeah. Dialed in. And so it was like, if you let it go long enough, the genres would start to change. Right? Mm-hmm. And so as that happened, we would just start downloading. Like, that sounds neat. Download the album. Listen to the whole thing. Uh, every second and, there. and we uh, we just kept going through and going through. And the next thing you know, like, uh, like what really inspired me to play music originally was actually the song More Than a Feeling from Boston. Uh, my old man got me on. Oh, Boston, man! I mean, it, it, if you really listen to Boston, you're like, "What am I doing with my instrument?" <laughs> well, and then you later find out that that guy was a graduate of MIT and that he made his own effects pedals. He yeah, made his own amp. He made his I own mean, recording. You're never gonna touch that, that level of guitar geekiness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which is why nobody sounds like that guy. Yeah, by but, the way. but but it's no. the same with like Sting. You listen to Sting, you're like, "What am I doing? Why am I not yeah, learning a new instrument why? right now? Why?" Am I- or 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 so many musicians, you're just like. Dolly Parton. Yeah. Dolly Parton plays like eight, nine instruments. Oh, for sure. Seriously. For sure. Yeah, in a yeah, show. She's amazing. She's on two hour shows still and, and goes through something like six or seven instruments and you're just like... And to quote yeah. Dolly Parton, her best songs were never released. Really? Well, no, not never released, but they were never hits because the radio wouldn't allow the content mm. of the song on the, the time, radio right. at the time. Now, and I mean, nowadays... I wouldn't be surprised if she came out and dropped it. Like, Bumps kick. and hoes! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's literally arrived at that point. I'll tell you what, though, the last little point on my thing is that the game changer, though, was the discovery of Rush. Oh, jeez. Well, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> like, Again, what am I doing with Rush? Yeah, what about the WTF, man? Yeah. <laughs> like, it was literally one of those things where it was like, once I found Rush, it was like, which, by the way, my older brother uh, is is amazing uh, individual. He as well got a job. The middle brother of the older little, older got me into music. Uh, middle brother and blue turf and blue turf <laughs> and he uh but he got me uh he was working for the same field turf company he was making like 70 bucks an hour working for a school yeah. and uh installing like high school football fields they were paying him ridiculous amounts of money for him. <laughs> and uh i've seen rush like nine times because of that dude working that job and being nice. like dude you want to go see rush and i'm like yes i do <laughs> anytime you get the hookup for concerts or <laughs> yeah, somebody, you're like, they're your best do friend. that <laughs> Like, seriously, everybody go home, find yourself a concert, buddy. You yeah, need yeah. one. I'm yeah. telling you, it will enhance your life or, in many ways. Or just be in a band and, you know, yeah. you get to see a concert. Every day is a concert. <laughs> <in> a <day. laughs> he is your concert buddy. Right. Concert buddies. <laughs> Moving from early musical influences to current influences, aside from your own stuff, what are you listening to now? Yeah. <laughs> that gets you, that, what's, your, what's your, like, go-to get you, get you jam, jamming? Now, right now, I'm actually on a shine down binge. Really it's funny you say that. I just recently came off of one. Okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, know I, that I love. For sure. I love. Um, who, who, who do you think you are? Or what? No, the song. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, enemies. Enemies. Yeah, enemies. Yeah, enemies. Thank you. I I love the video for that. It's 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 hysterical, and at the yeah. same time, it kind of hits home at a certain point. Yeah, like, if you've been in a band, yeah, exactly. Like uh, a lot of the bands we've been in, you yeah. come across it. But I also like I, I like watching like their older stuff, and suddenly his hair is gone, and and it, their sound changed right, a little right. bit. And now they're a little bit harder. <laughs> well, you can see like the the evolution of the music, and I think that's what's most beautiful. I mean, you you have uh, uh what was uh, the deluxe? Uh, I, mean, I can't remember the name of the soundtrack. But when when you can see when when they when they got big, and mm-hmm. then when they 
kind of dropped off, and then and they came back up. You can see the evolution of the music, and all cool. of it's great. All of it's I think they awesome. did that thing where we got big, and then, and then we made our mistakes, and we and then we we kind of realized, hey, let's just go back to making the music we like to make, right? Yeah, and yeah. and then um, the and now they're kids. just like, you know, now they're having fun with it again, as opposed to worrying about. All, all that little stuff you got to worry about when you're signed to a major record. Right, right, right. right. I, I think with the most recent album, I think you really have a message to send. I think you had, like, he's been seeing things going on in the world. Because, yeah. I mean, he really sent a message. And he's always been, uh, I, I've been studying the guy because he's a great storyteller. He really is. And I think that's yeah, it's not really, really good five, lyrics. man, even first, the first album. Oh, yeah. You know, like, I, I, I love lyrics where you, there's a story and it's not just how great you are or something like that. The Johnny Cash! <laughs> 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 a raconteur, uh, if you will. Do, doing a shout out, um, I've been being tutored under um, Corinne Zai for doing my vocals, and then Ren Zai for doing the acting and storytelling. They've been teaching me how to do songwriting nice. and such. And I think this, uh, I think uh, the the lead singer from Shinedown is really the epitome of what they are trying to teach me. Because I mean, if you're really not telling a story when you're doing music, what are you really putting across? Right. I mean, I think that's the main goal. I think if you can, uh, he, he was, he was trying to become a doctor in psychology and one of the, really? Yeah. I had no idea. And so one, one of the things that he was trying to put across was one of the questions I was asked while he was being tutored was how do you reach somebody without actually touching them? How do you reach somebody without actually communicating with them physically? Mm -hmm. Like you and I are now. Yeah. And you know, all of these students were coming up with textbook reasons, you know, they were reading, you know, what, what <coughs> repeating what they read. And he's like music. Music is the one way that you can actually touch somebody without actually physically being there, and you can make them feel like they're not alone. You can make them feel like they're they're a part of something that you've been. Um, and we are here to touch you all. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel, feel it? it? <laughs> yeah. all right. With that, we're, we're going to take a quick break. Booze break. We'll be right back. Cheers. We're back. <laughs> Clank. Clank. Ah, Evan Williams, love it. Sponsor Scotch. It, you see? Uh, no, that's really funny. It's a lot smoother than, than Jack Daniels. I, I really don't care for Jack. To me, Jack is like Jose Cuervo for tequila. It's just like, it's cheap and you can get it at, at any bar, you know, and stuff. And It's not cheap, but I understand. Yeah. Well, no, Jack is cheap compared to Jack is other things. Right. This, however, this whole bottle is nine ninety nine total one. But uh, quick, quick travel trip, right? Uh, if you're a raging alcoholic, stay the hell out of Australia. Because uh, uh, a bottle about this big of Jack Daniels is fifty bucks. Oh, so, oh shit! Yeah, because uh, and, 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 and nature's trying to kill you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, although I will say this is that it, like uh, it nature, up. everything there is trying to kill you. Remember that, right. uh, but the thing is, is that it, it works just like here. So, like even in Vegas, like we have black widows and different things like that. But they're all on the outskirts. Like once yeah. you start getting into the suburbs, is when you start running into stuff like that. But if you're in the middle of the city, you don't really find a whole lot of that. It's right. the same thing in Australia because it's like, like all the stuff that and, yeah, and all like well, the the thing that you find like where my brother lives in Surfers Paradise is like brown snakes and stuff like that. But then you literally right. have to go out. Unfortunately, where my brother lives, they also have flash floods that take them from where they are and bring them in. So you yeah. go out to go start your car the next morning, and you got like a 10-foot snake in your uh, carburetor. Yeah. They're like, oh, there's your problem right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Susie, what are you doing in there? Yeah, you know, like, it, is, it is what it is. I thought my like, belt uh, sounded funny. Yeah, pretty right. much. Yeah. <laughs> why am I hearing? Why, why is my belt hissing at me? He seems really pissed. So we, we do have to finish up uh, after the booze break. With current musical influences for you, who are you listening to right now? Uh, well, my favorite guitar player is this kid out of Australia, ironically enough. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Australia. Coincidentally, he means. He's from Perth, Australia, which is literally the only thing on the left side of that country. Uh, they, uh, Perth is, uh, or his name is Polini, but uh, he's very prog. I don't know, like if you're in like Absolutely. Steve Vai and like that whole sort okay. of thing, like you Math should go check rock. out. <laughs> Pretty much. The one thing, like, so, like, I call them Look What I Can Do bands, like Animals as Leaders, uh, oh God, what's the other one? Uh, these, uh, uh, God damn it, Their Dogs Were Astronauts is another good one, a good example. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, what are they called? They're called Their Dogs Were Astronauts. Uh, that right there screams prog rock. Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, they, uh, 
there's a whole lot of those look what I can do mm-hmm. bands, and the I like Polini more than the rest of them because he's a lot more musical than the rest of them. Like, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong, I really do want to see what you can do. Right. But there are times in like a lot of that music where it's like they'll they'll hit something really cool. Yeah, you know, like in, in especially with like animals as leaders, very genty, very cool, very fun, and stuff like that. A lot of like crazy rhythmic patterns and stuff like that. Right. And then they immediately run away from it, and it never comes back. See, I like that. I, I like that. I'm playing, and it's you know, it's radio friendly and stuff. And I'm playing. And here's a chance to, and then you're, and then I'm going back, and you're like, Wait, oh, you can pl- you can do stuff. Yeah. Which is why Adam Jones from Tool, Tool is like one right, of my right, right. Bands, is like a, the one thing that him and Jerry Cantrell from Alice in Chains were the two guitar players that taught me one thing is that you don't need a million notes, right? You can no. sing more with well, three notes if they're the right three notes at you, the right time. But you know who taught them? It's Brian May from Queen. Oh yeah. I mean, you talk about playing just the right notes for like anytime I when I when I was again fronting to the suspense because. I was all the guitar. I couldn't do a whole bunch without completely dropping out. Yeah. So it, I, I really had to figure out how can I not just be, go be, down to just soloing, and, and how do I make it to fit the song? And that's what what I tried to do was was I tried to say, okay, what would Brian May do? <laughs> you got to be in two places at once. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 Or you can go with the the, the you know uh, a loop pedal or something. But <sighs> I. I have a little pedal. I still to this day cannot go more than about eight bars before I'm t- totally off. Yeah, you got to be yeah. like right on it. Uh, but there, no, there are guys around town that, that definitely make a living doing the loop pedal. You know, Gonzo's Cosmos. You got Jeremy um, Cornwell and uh, Sean Eichmann. Uh, you, you got guys that that's that's their bread and butter is solo gig, doing the loop pedal, doing covers, building a song from scratch every single time. Right. If it works, yeah. it works. Not, but not, not personally, it's me. not yeah. easy. Yeah, it's just. Right. Did we get your current musical influence? I think we just yeah, said Yeah, we need to go to Terry. 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 What Terry. are your Terry. influences Terry. Terry. right here? How is Terry? All the new. How is Terry? Why is Terry? Speaking of my pomegranate for me. <laughs> wow. First of all, so. Get your dirty hands what? off my pomegranate. <laughs> <laughs> Never touch another man's pomegranate. <laughs> 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 Sir, please stop. Quit looking me in the eye while you violate my phone. <laughs> <laughs> At least we should know about it. Yeah, right. Is <laughs> that a speed spot now? I feel yeah, dirty. Right? Do you feel dirty? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> what's your current mind? Dirty is one What are you listening to right now? Um, mine's been basic. Uh, most generic. Bossy band, so basic. No, Avenged Sevenfold. It's like, my most generic. Dude, there's nothing oh, basic about it. nothing basic oh, about it. But who was wearing, I saw one of you wearing a sh- one of their shirts in a picture. Was it you? I think it was that guy. Yeah. 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 It's it's mainstream because it's supposed to be the new Metallic or the modern day Metallic. Uh, Metallica. But I like Avenged Sevenfold. It's good mostly. reaction right there. Kind of like but, I like Five Finger Death Punch mostly, <laughs> but they're not. They don't really have the good score right as much. Actually, Avenged Sevenfold. If you, you can tell what Avenged Sevenfold is listening to by their it's albums. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody bought them a Metallica album. Somebody bought them a Guns N' Roses <laughs> album. Somebody bought them a this album. But they, they did say in the interview that that, that was their influence at that time. Ta- but, hold on, let me get at least they're honest about the it. main thing. Um, so when I was getting into drums, I listened to this at the time. The title album, right? Mm-hmm. So when I listened to drummer was awesome. Jimmy, yes, Rest Jimmy, was, yeah, was. Jimmy, like the first song I listened to was Scream. Yeah. Right, Scream was not your typical metal song. Right, the typical a name like song. Scream, you expect it to be. Yeah, it was like it, this nice head banging, right. groove hip hop metal kind of groove to the drumming, and I was like, mm-hmm. I want to do that. And right. so I want to be out of the box. I want to be out of my own zone and whatnot, and learn more and. And do other things, and then there's like later songs like Critical Claim, Little Piece of Heaven that I noticed that he's got a vocal, right? A good vocal range. And then I'm like, I want to do that too, but then my voice cracks down all the time. Yeah, I can't reach that. So Some, yeah. someday you'll, you'll you'll be done with puberty. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> all that hair will finish growing in in those places. Yeah. But it's not, it's, <laughs> have they dropped yet? Whoa! No, oh, see, this is the yeah. Not all the way. <laughs> Once you've been married as long as I've been in a jar somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she leaves him in a purse. But it wasn't them. Right next to her, forty-five. <laughs> was inspiring. Like after they lost the rap, yeah, right. it took a lot of them <laughs> to come up with another album <laughs> right. dedicated to the rap. So it was just more than musicians or musicianship. They still put out the work, even though they just lost their best friend, and they right. still. Have that fa- uh, family feeling, and that's what also drifting into be in a band is have that family connection. 
putting the band being brothers yeah. to the end. And that is one of the nice things about doing this show is that I get I get to meet a lot of musicians, some of which I've never met in my life. I just happen to reach out to them based on you did a show with somebody else who I know, kind of thing. Yeah. And also I get to hear about bands that I've never heard of, a lot of local bands too. Um, and, and and it opens me up to that, but also I get to see that family dynamic in a lot of bands, whether or not they're currently doing big things or whether they're like, we haven't done a thing in two years and you're our first interview, you're our first anything, this is the first time we've played in two years, it, they still are actually like a unit. Mm-hmm. And, and I can I get that from you guys as well. Just um, I saw your um, hilarious, what was that video? Hilarious hijinks or something like that. You made, a, you made an outtake video, basically. Ah, uh, uh, that was with... Uh... Yeah, that was, yeah, that was a sack. Yep, that was our music video. Thanks, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> the word hilarious was in it. Anyway, um, well, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, that was still a good time. Still good memories. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hold on. Before we, I don't even try to segue. We're trying to keep no, this no, within fine. like nine hours. Um, what are you? What are you listening to? Uh, oh yeah, we, I'm sorry, we skipped you. Yeah, recently, well, 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 I mean, fuck that guy on a personal I mean, level, but I mean, yeah, <laughs> but current, current, no, but, um, current, current, current right now with um, uh, uh, In Flames, uh, Breaking Benjamin. Uh, oh yeah, Breaking Benjamin. Yeah, I love uh, the, the way they're like the head popping, the head banging, stuff like right. that, the groove, the breakdown. I like any band where you can't uh, help but kind of do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> whether you, whether yeah, you yeah, fucking yeah. like it or not, you're like, you realize you don't even know you're doing it. You don't have to be a metal. Just yeah, yeah. All right. All of a sudden, they become bubbleheads. Everybody and a lot of that comes from either either it's bass driven or it's drum drum driven um, or bass and drum driven. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's like it's rhythm section driven a lot where you can't <laughs> help it. Yes, yes. Um, Man, we have bring you back to that. Thank you, Mr. Scientist. You know, like oh, the thank you, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, Dude, their bass oh. player is stupid nutty. Yeah. Stupid nutty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like yeah. that. Like uh, in the shop that I work at, that's usually like normal amount of pipes. Thank you, Mr. Scientist. Not where I work. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Scientist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna they're gonna thank eliminate you. the Mr. eventually. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's time. Oh, I'm sorry, are you done? Oh, yeah, pretty okay. much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's done. Yeah. No, okay. are you <laughs> done yet? I hate that question. I, I need anyway, <laughs> this guy gets it. Uh, so <laughs> I'm married, yeah. It's. <laughs> You're married? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, I love you, Leah. Yes. <laughs> here's, here's to. We here's, get all the groupies. Here's to, our, here's to the people that put up with us, no matter who they be. <laughs> We're only as good as the women in our lives, trust and believe. <laughs> <Morning. laughs> <laughs> But uh, for us, for all of us, I think it's women. But anyway, um, uh, what, uh, what, what is her care. name? Steve? Steve? Yeah. Uh, I, I, you just met my wife. Her name's Larry. <laughs> Which, by the way, curveball. No, I <laughs> kept a, talking about this Larry and a woman walking. It's a nickname, but it makes Steve. sense. Ah, uh, she's she's good. She's oh, a lovely lady. lady. You hear that, honey? You, not that you're ever gonna watch this, but. I love you. You're beautiful. Here's you hear that, honey? I don't know what you're doing with this guy, but uh... <laughs> hey, man, our marriage can drive, and our our uh, relationship can can actually uh, vote. So, you know, nice. Wait, oh, hold on a second. Is it old enough to buy its own scotch? Though? Sorry, yes. No, no, it's not. We've Almost. Been, we've, we've been married. We'll seven, have a good uh, celebration. Sorry, sorry. That sorry. Day what I meant was, yeah, our marriage can drive. Our mar- we've been together. We've been married 17 years. We've been get together 19 years. So yeah, our, our marriage can vote. Nice. Our, our relationship can vote. Anyway, I, thank you very much. We'll see you in four years for the party. I hope you all come out. I digress. Moving on to that most hated of interview questions, especially for musicians. How do you define your musical style? Oh, oh Jesus. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's easy. Easy. Elevator pitch, boys. Let's go. <laughs> like, define what we do. Like, <laughs> oh. what, what? I mean, we're like, we're hold not on, like, uh, we don't really like genres. I mean, we sound like <laughs> us, man. We sound <laughs> like us. Like, modern. <laughs> uh, you know what? Hardcore. Come to a show. Come to a show. Yeah. You'll know. No, yeah. seriously. It, I'm it, referring to the movie Airheads for the yes. answer to this question. <laughs> Wait, wait, repeat the question because I'm a little slow. Let me drive my stuff. Oh, Daddy drove in right. a car with me. Let me do this. <laughs> How do you define your musical style? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In tempo. What? what? I'm a little you, slow. You gotta go fast, How do you define your musical style? <laughs> 
You know, it's you know, it's you know, it's you know, it's you know it's it's like, I think like, I got this one. Okay. Right? Uh, upon giving it some thought, oh, yeah. Yeah. We all, all, all of the play. Like, and, and, uh, and you're not allowed to say, "Well, Tiberius and Horizon with this." With this, right. yeah, no. Uh, like the cool thing about this, and keep in mind, I mean, like we're we're still kind of you know new at this as as far as whatever. More right. and more uh, songs are being written, and it's like we all kind of. Like edgy would be the best way to put it in a word, but like, at that's the same a big t- thing. Yeah, yeah, but like, it, but the thing is, is that it's more like if you like drinking, smoking, straight west coasting, and doing all the sort of fun things that come along with the lifestyle of rock and roll, like yep. you're kind of in the right ballpark. But the interesting thing is, is that as time goes on. Like, we all have this eclectic group of influences and stuff like that, that even though it's going to be like, this is what we do, we're going to start incorporating, like, all of our other influences into what we do. And so it's going to be like, uh, I mean, obviously there would be way heavier bands than us. But we're not out there writing eighties power ballads. That's for damn sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually did. I did an episode about this very answering this very question. It's it's important that you do have that answer. Yeah, because you do have to because get your number one. Class. Yeah, even just on the emails or or your bio page or whatever, you gotta have kind of a we incorporate this and this and this or whatever your answer is. But I think you definitely are on the right track. Yeah. I, I can't answer the question any better. Really You're going to need surgery to remove this boot from that ass, all right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Stone Cold Rock. <laughs> but I, I think, no, you're definitely on the right right track. We talked about your earliest you know, musical influences, the jazz and the punk and everything. And, and it's going to find its way in. It just yeah. is if you're doing you know music with a band for a certain amount of time. You're gonna be like, hey, how about something different? Yeah, it's not, but it's not even that. It's just like, uh, so like, uh, you know, Guthrie Govan is obviously. The name rings a bell, but I can't remember why. Guthrie Govan is a guitar player. <laughs> Let me school you. Let me, uh, like, if you have not just, Dream of just fucking YouTube Guthrie Govan, all right? This guy, like, a, uh, if you're into tasty licks, man, this is the way to go. <laughs> but like, the funny thing is, is like, dude, he'll just randomly shred and then it'll be like, the best blues player ever and all this other stuff. But all of his songs are like two minutes long because you should be able to say what you want to say within that period of time. But Guthrie Unless Govan... Unless you rush. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but he, uh, he, uh, when you're instrumental anyway. Uh, but like the, the thing about him was that he said that you should steal everything in the sense of like your techniques and stuff like that. Like tapping, you know, you're never going to sound like Eddie Van Halen. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because Eddie Van Halen plays exactly like Eddie Van Halen. You right. might be influenced by Eddie Van Halen, but you will never be Eddie Van Halen. I like a, a little dose, of, just like a little touch of tapping. Right, just yeah, to be like, you know, Accent. And then, and then you go back to what you're doing, not, I'm going to do a six-minute-long solo, and half of it's going to be tapping, tapping and man. the other half's going to be bends. It's like, come on. Yeah. That's how look what I can do. Right. Yeah. But the, like, I feel like that was what he was getting at, where it's like, no matter what you learn along the way in life, the little techniques, the little like nuances and so whatever, you're never going to be your favorite musicians. You're always just going to be yourself. And so they don't exactly come out right. So all of us have all of these different influences from all the things and all the songs that we've learned over time and stuff like that we'll start to incorporate all these little subtle nuances of all of our influences or whatever until it eventually becomes just us. Right. And it's just a thing that we do. And like, I always try to put a target on it. You know, I want to be a hard rock. I want to be metal. You know, I want want to do like cool instrumental stuff. I want to do classic rock and I want to do cool streamy things, you know, but like when when we all get together, you know, we don't like focus on, Hey, like what, we have what, to what, do let's this. Play this we genre. Have to, let's yeah. play metal. Let's play blues. Now we, we get together. You're coming up with some cool shit, man. We're all over. And, and, and let's be honest, all music is thievery. Yeah. And and yeah. but yeah. also absolutely, you're if you're right. Say you're doing a we'll just say straight ahead hard rock song. Mm-hmm. And you're doing a guitar solo. Yeah. And you, you're you're like you know what we sound really good right here is a little bit of you know blah, 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 you know a little bit of blues progression. Yeah. If it fits. Go Fence. for it, you know? Yeah. And people, we, and, and we serve the musicians music. are going to be like, hey, I know what you're doing. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, I always, I, there's always that one song when you're a band that eventually you write a song, you're just like, this is different than what we normally do, but it's fun because we don't normally do this. Yeah. See any Offspring album ever and find that one song. <laughs> Dr. It's in there. It's in there. Just find it. It's in there. Dr. Dexter. <laughs> Can you believe that? 
It's, you know that, right? No, I don't think so. He's got a PhD in physics. Oh, it's Brian the lead, sing, lead singer of... That's astrophysics, and that is a whole other... The dude has three papers that are published as scientific facts. This is Brian May we're talking about. <laughs> Brian May. But also is. Dexter, the lead singer of The Offspring, has a PhD in physics. Because, you know, just in case that whole music thing didn't work out. <laughs> you, you never know. Um, I think it was physics. That was actually physics, my first physics concert. Physics or it was chemistry. Ever. But yeah, so moving on. Because this is going on. Um, musical goals as a band. Aside from playing with Iron Maiden. <laughs> yeah, 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 that, if you replace good. Steve, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, at Lot Three, I opened up for uh, Chevelle, so that was pretty cool. On the nice, stage. nice. So that, uh, that was pretty badass. Unfortunately, I didn't get to meet him. But, but, but as a band, as Hades Hand, mm-hmm. you, you've already had the the you know wrestler walk out to one of your songs. Mm-hmm. Which which song was that? Uh, Sell yourself. Sell yourself. Yes. Sell yourself. And what was the wrestler? Do it to what? Wasn't there a wrestler that picked one of your songs to walk out to? Ah, the Macho Man. No. no what the hell? <laughs> I saw something from you guys that uh, somebody had walked out to one of your songs. And you had like, a little video. Back uh, that, 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 was, that, that, that was a long time ago. I know, I that's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. I, okay, forget, so, which one. That was uh, song, I forget the man's name. I really do. Uh, but that was during a uh, tough enough fight. Yeah. Which so. still is cool. Yeah, no, I, I would actually. It was, be uh, it was, called, it was called "Pull yeah. Your Head Out," and that was with a different singer. That's like, right, pull, pull your head out. <laughs> yeah. I wonder where they were pulling their head out of. They're, they're really wrestling good. shorts. I don't know. You're gonna have to listen to the song. But but uh, anyway, getting back to the, the, the task at hand, Hades' hand, musical goal is what? Make money, F bitch. Oh no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Dude, like, uh, it's, uh, yeah, out there, yeah, like, our, our, my, me personally, and I'm sure, like, most people here, um, is to become a professional musician, a professional entertainer. Right. Tra- travel the world, meet new people, see new people, and then, like, get, you know, of course, you know, get paid oh, it would be nice. Yeah. You know, that would be great, you know. <laughs> to make you know, a living doing music yeah, with, without. That, 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 that's, that's, that's the dream career. The too. trick is to, to not do it where you're also having to deal with the downside of. Right. Being a professional musician and touring all the time. Absolutely. All right, I won't do heroin. You <laughs> <laughs> know what? I promise. Yeah. Like, I've been I've been through that. Hey, you know where the drummer is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, why the drummer? But like, I, guitar yeah, I players. Like, I look at a lot a lot of these songs you know, that have like a lot of meaningful uh, messages and stuff like that. And I look at the comics on YouTube and say, hey, you know, the, this song helped me through uh, this depression. This helped me through oh, really? this that's, problem. Or something like that. that is a sh- and, and that's that, huge. That, that, that's a, like, I want to, like, you know, that means so much to me. I'm not saying, like, I, I, I would love to help someone out in that form through music. You know, there are worse things in life, certainly. Yeah, yeah. so like yeah. maybe like you know, I might have like certain problems. I put I portray yep. my problems to music and like ask you know, hey, this is what my problem was. That's how I dealt with it. And maybe someone else one day be like, hey, you're not alone. You know, like you're, yeah, not, you're alone. not alone. You know, they thank you for passing that information. You know, but like yeah, you know, I'm, so I'm like I, I really that's agree actually, with that. Yeah, no, it's, it's kind of weird because like uh. I want to change the world in my own little way, right? Because I have this theory, yes. like, you know what the six degrees of separation are? Well, uh-huh. I know you, you know somebody. Actually, as a matter of fact, in. as a matter of fact, we actually just discovered the six degrees of separation. Right, we are exactly... What up, Sean? We are exactly... <laughs> <laughs> Two degrees of separation. Yeah. Yeah. Turns out he knows my drummer, Sean Plume, who, yeah. on, who was the very first interview on this channel. No kidding. No kidding. <laughs> oh, dude, that's awesome. I'm going to yes. literally see him a little later, so that's fine. And uh, anybody who's seen one of my whiskey reviews with Sean... You know him as well. Yeah. Part of the whiskey tribe. Yeah. Woot! What up? <laughs> Sorry, only whiskey drinkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah out of here. Fine. I don't it's, think it's cheap. I don't think it's cheap. Like, you got it. I but, uh, admit, it's all good. That's all good. But yeah, so like, I, I kind of want to change the world in my own little way. And like, I feel like the way to change the world is to kind of like better yourself in a weird way, right? Mm-hmm. And then we all know human beings are monkey see, monkey do. Right. Within six people, that will have worked that way, its way back sure. to me, and I will have changed the world in my own little way. There's going to be a little pay and, forward. Yeah, and it's just like, that's all I really want to do. It's like, I uh, I really dream of the day that I get a little, an email from little Timmy in Tennessee that's 13 years old and is like, dude, you're my favorite band. Well, guess what, Timmy? Your birthday party is about to be the shit. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted. I always that, that's really awesome. Actually, that, that reminds me of something I thought I saw that I thought oh, 
I wish I, I wish I could, I would, I would love to be famous enough to where me showing up and doing a gig in your garage blew people's yeah, minds. it would be awesome. Just like Foo Fighters. Yeah! yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Make it a garage tour? Yeah! How fucking awesome is that? Did you see any of those videos at all? I did. You There's know, a guy, and the guy, and the guy, for whatever reason, they let the guy play guitar with them, and he starts playing, dun, 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 and the rules like, all right, I guess we're doing all, yeah. all my life, here we go. And But I, I was like, oh, I'd love to be that, to be on the other end of that, would just be like, we are going to blow our fans' minds by doing this weird little, just, you know, not going to like a little venue. We're going to your fucking house, hey. playing your garage, yeah. drinking your beers. And, and, and by <laughs> your friends. Home, yeah. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, like, yep. we're, yeah, straight up. I mean, it's just like the little things like that influence far beyond anybody could ever yep. imagine. And it's just one of those things where it's like, I don't know, the... The world's kind of in a weird spot right now where, like, we're we're kind of fighting for the social conscious. Uh, yes. Yeah, and it's just like, I don't know. I, I can't control everybody else. Y'all do whatever the hell you want to do. But me, yeah. personally, it's just like, I'm going to live the rest of my life to try and, you know, be better. Right. <laughs> be better than what I was yesterday. <laughs> I don't want to work every day, you know. I want to no, go into yeah. the world and do what I actually love. My right. career is, is music. Hey, if we can make a few bob along the way. Yeah, you know? yeah. Live healthy. <laughs> I don't have to be rich or anything like that, as long as I can do what I love and, you know, be ha happy about it, um, you know? Dun, dun. Yeah. These, these how how do keep people out <laughs> yeah, they're still idealists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now I, I want, like, a better paying job and also be paid to do YouTube and do music right, and all those up. things. I want it all. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Queen. Anyway. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, now, you haven't been Hades' hand long enough to really do a show as Hades' hand, right? Right. No. no. So we're going to go back a little bit to the Hyperion's Horizon. Sorry, guys. Who weren't, yes. who weren't there. Or See maybe, you later. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, you were in Hyperion's Horizon, son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So, yeah. actually, we're going to go more... Remotely OG. We're going to go individual. <laughs> Favorite show memory that you've been part of? It could be good, it could be bad, it could be somebody that ended up in jail or whatever. Uh, Those are the best ones. Uh, what are you talking about? For me, it's... Uh, what year was it? When we were, well, we were, December when we won the Hard Rock Night. Sicily, 1923. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah we, were, we were practicing so hard. I forget uh, what year it was, but Hard Rock has this competition. Hard where, Rock uh, Rising was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. The, so, the, the Battle of the Fans is what it was. And that, that was kind of an iconic moment for us because like, we really didn't feel like we were the best fan there. We really didn't. Uh, but okay. we, like, we still just like. But the fan, but the crowd was into it. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, of course they were. They were into us. Yeah, like we won it. I'm feeling too conflicted memories of this all day. Wait a minute. Like, one of them went back to the green room. Really. Yeah. I, I felt like we were uh, <laughs> we were up against some really good competition. I felt like there was other bands that were better than us there. Uh, that, that's at least the lead that I took. The, you know the whole situation. But you won, right? Mm -hmm. We did, but at the same time, there's like, the yeah, we, we won for Vegas, but then, like, when this whole global thing voting, oh, and that, stuff that, like that's, that, when, that's when PR that. work and politics yeah. come into play, yeah. Oh, but there's like, some, that, that, that was really kind of weird, like, you know, like this thing actually won, like, a cool, uh, like, actually big competition, like, in Vegas, you know, like. But that was yeah. your favorite show memory was being part of that and I, winning that competition. Yeah, because like uh, honestly, like we weren't all expecting it. We were like we were playing our heart out, like we yeah. were having fun, we were having a great it time. It didn't matter what stage we were on. Yeah, we, we, we could have been a dive fun. bar, could have been the Hard Rock Rising. It didn't matter. It's like we played the same every show just to try and cause that influence and that draw. Just and, to try. And, and all of a sudden, you know, they called her name on. We're like. What? Oh, what? That like, 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 wait a minute. That reminds me of. Uh, <laughs> no. He lies like in the bathroom taking a crap and I'm like, what? <laughs> 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 Just let me get these up and. Uh, uh, People's nice. Magazine. Like, that, that reminds me of another band that was on here, Crimson Riot, pop punk band. Yes, who, who, their day job is the Ro Roxy Gun Project. Yes. Um, they hold that record I, I told you guys about. <laughs> <laughs> um, they totally weren't expecting to win uh, We Will Rock You season one. You, like you see it on their face, they're like, "Wait, what?" Oh, Wait a second, and they uh, won. Uh, and and uh, uh, <laughs> yep, I've got another uh, from season two. We will rock you. Got the nocturnal affair is coming up here in a, in a couple weeks, so stay tuned for that. I'm excited. I don't know. If, I, do, I don't know what whether they won or what the final outcome was of that. I can't find it online, so I'm gonna have to ask them. Anywho, favorite show memory? Um, uh, when recently. 
got back from Germany, as I said, I didn't play as many shows as these two, or even Alex the Kid has played. Alex the Kid. <laughs> um, but we did, my other band, we were called Danger Love, and we're fairly brand new, And but we already started playing at shows at House of Blues, we have one coming up at the Rio and whatnot, in just a short time we're playing right. these shows here. Yeah. But we played one House of Blues show, it's just two bands, a cover band and us, and like when we went on stage, it's already a full house already. And so we've never had a complete full house, and just seeing the whole crowd, we're just like, don't suck, don't suck, don't suck. It wasn't that suck, and it's just like, continue so, my bands. So what was the name of that band? A Danger Love. Danger Love. Link will be in the doobly doo. Uh, is that, did you get that name from Love Without a Condom? Is that I what it is? <laughs> Our first, our Danger original, Love. I, I, I just hit things. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like I shut up with these sticks and uh, <laughs> it went at someone. <laughs> Shout out to Sidewalks for hitting me off the street. <laughs> Dad joke. Um, but literally seeing a full house for the first time was, for you, was, it was yeah. breathtaking. I was like, oh yeah, oh, yeah that's about to go It down. is a great feeling. Like, it like, is a great feeling. Shit, like, and people like people don't even know us in here. You already got a crowd of people just screaming and <laughs> yelling and clapping. Nice. And it felt like, no offense to the cover band that I was playing, but it felt like we brought the crowd more because it's like original and something new. Yeah. Some people in the crowd were like, or new Motley crew, and I was like, you you paid to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I think Motley Crew's a lot better than we are, so I was like, no, we're not even close to the new Motley Crew. Your band sucks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right. I could persist. Um, I, you know, saying that, you saying that actually brings back a lot of memories. I mean, it's just like, Damon and I have been put in a lot of situations where it's just like, we have a crowd cheering. I, I can't put one show on mine that is actually the best. <laughs> but, but, I mean, there's been a lot of times where it's just, you, you enjoy the crowd when you, when you hear them and see them respond to you and you see them dancing on the dance floor. Or at least get up on stage and dance with you, especially mm-hmm. at the dive bars. Oh, that's that's oh, the best. That's, that's the beautiful. best. Yeah. When, they, when they jump up on stage and everybody's like, oh, you're supposed to be up there. Like, it, that's, that's the best You're, you're like, you were the brave soul that said, I don't care. I don't get on stage. Yeah. Actually, there's another great memory. I think, what band was that for at the dive bar? That you guys played out with this? Oh, which one? <laughs> uh, Wild Child? Yeah, oh, Wild Child. Yeah. Bar. We played the Dying Bar with Wild Child. Yeah. Here, like the whole band of Wild Child just like came up all in person yeah. with us. I think that was like a great yeah, experience. Yeah, I, I played with them. So that's a huge compliment. Together. It's always the coolest yeah. feeling when you got yeah. your fans coming up on stage with you and you're sharing that moment with you on stage. And yeah. it's, it's, that's that point where music just fucking meets like you hey, connect us something. Jetty, I, 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 we said Bio Child in there, well, so you better give us some will be press, right? <laughs> so I'll, I'll be looking for you, man. Bio right? Child, thank you for later. <laughs> Bio Child, if you're brave enough to come and do man, acoustic, that, that Gaty can fucking shred. Yeah, Gaty can fucking shred. That guy. Is the only thing sick, that man. caught me off guard is when we went down to the crowd after the show, and mm-hmm. like, people wanted to take pictures, and I'm like. I, I'm a sweaty mess. What are you talking about? What? <laughs> me? You want to take a picture with me? That's really like, I got, 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 like, you know, uh, bare tooth and all that stuff, and people are still coming up and like, hey, you did a great job, we'll take a picture. And like, that, that's like so cool. Humbling. This is, that, that, that is awesome. That, that is very it's, cool. It's, it's humbling, you're in a rarefied like, area. So like, you know, I know that it's like just that little bit of like, you know, take a picture that like means the world to me. I know that part of it is they're thinking, hey, you know, he might be really big someday. I want to have this picture to, look, to say, look, you know, that I knew him back then. My coworkers. I, I was wondering I, about I, that. I'm not, I'm not even thinking about being that big. It's just kind of like cool. Right. Like, hey, like, but, you know, I, I, was, yeah, like, no, I mean, I, had, I entertained somebody mm-hmm. and they wanted to get to know me. Start at one fan. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I entertained somebody. <laughs> they wanted to get to know me. They wanted to take a picture. And then that, that's like just. I, I did my job. Right, exactly. That, 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 I did my job. That's, that's the best thing. ATK? Alex the Kid? Uh, <laughs> I need to get an acronym now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. That, that's an abbreviation. Yeah. <laughs> an, acronym, an acronym is when you can actually say it as a word. Oh. Ah. Okay. Back, back I to high school, school I'm a dad. Here we are. Stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am a victim of public education. I am sorry. <laughs> so, but, uh, your favorite show memory? I don't know. Uh, well, two of them come to mind, but they're from one of my other bands called Bag of Humans, which is based out of Baltimore. Bag right? of Humans. Bag of Humans. I thought you said Back of Humans. I was like, yeah, I man. can't be right. <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it's called Bag of Humans. Uh, That's actually really cool. I like that name. Yeah. Uh, we actually, 
Oh, uh, no, I can't reveal that. It's funny. I'll tell you off camera. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's one of those off the record. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll tell you off the record. But, uh... Bloopers. Uh, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, one of my, uh... Or, uh... We played two shows that I thought was pretty Which interesting. We played at the Whiskey at Go-Go. Nice. And, uh, I you know, I mean, that's one of those things that I'd like to play, but at the same time, I hear it's... Yeah. Eh. That, that would be my review of it. Mm-hmm. Um... Management can use a little finessing. PSA. Uh, well, the thing just, is, they're, just living be, <laughs> they're living on history. They're not trying to. Just be fucking new. nice. We'll settle. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah. just right there. You I know? have heard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, just be nice to people. That'd be cool. Uh, and, and it, it doesn't have the cash in it. It needs to have when you say we're playing whiskey go go. Yeah. And I was like, just like yeah, we're playing this place that used to be big. And uh, sorry. Yeah. If you're if you work for whiskey go go or you're a huge fan of whiskey go go. We love you. No, like tell it was. What to tell them. It was awesome. But yeah. seriously, just tell them. You know, the acts are you know traveling. Right. You know, like maybe. You know. But uh, but your uh, favorite show ever. But yeah, actually, you know, it was funny. Like I didn't even like this didn't even register. And so you guys were talking about what you were talking about. But uh, we played a show in Houston, Texas, one time, and this little fourteen-year-old girl. Well, she might have been sixteen. Uh, we're done with child. Oh, oh, oh. Fucking child. Wait, 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 what, right? what, what music was this? What genre of music was this uh, you were playing? Dude, we're like weird metal, and I say that because like it's not really metal. Like okay. any metalhead who heard it would be like, this isn't fucking metal. And anybody who was <laughs> not those guys. in the metal heard the heavier side of us, they would okay. be like, this is garbage. You know what I'm saying? Nobody likes our fucking band, but we love our what, band. Check us out. What is the band called? Uh, Bag of Humans. Right. Uh, Bag of Humans. Yeah, Check well, I'll, I'll give them links and stuff like yeah. that. And check us out. And, and then you can not like us, too. But the one is not that really like You need to talk to uh, the last interview I did of uh, the young man named Joey Hines. He's actually the only person who's been on twice. <laughs> and I had to create new, all new questions for him. Um... He was the last inter- uh, the last interview of season one. This is the first interview of season two, I believe. Oh, thank you. For What's up, season two? If I'm wrong, <laughs> let me know in the comments. I, I, I can't keep him straight anymore. But uh, his marketing is he has shirts that he sells. They're black with white letters that says, fuck Joey Hines. <laughs> and you, you see Solid bunch, marketing. You, Solid you see marketing. the shirts at his shows, you're just like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's, it's a thing of beauty. Yes. Yeah. So that that's what you need is, is like, you know, screw bag of humans or whatever. Yeah, but uh yeah, yeah, straight up. Uh, Actually I used to have a shirt that uh from uh adverse side effects, ASFX, on the back it said we may suck but we're on stage. <laughs> that's <laughs> like beautiful. Yes, yes, that, that is I beautiful. wear that one hundred percent. But uh no, there's like this this little girl came up to me and she had bought one of our CDs at the thing and then yeah. after the show she was like, Can you sign it? That's a rock star moment. It, it, and it, I was like That's the best feeling. Fucking why? But then immediately <laughs> after that I was like, Yeah, sure. And then I was like, hang out for a minute. And then I left and I went and found all the rest of my bandmates okay. and I had them all sign. Oh, she only asked you. Yeah, she only asked me. Wow. And then like I'm sure I mean I don't know if she You, you were just the first person, yeah. Yeah, but like I mean, yeah. But <laughs> that's really cool. You should have gotten her email address, right? Or some yeah. way to contact her so you could say, "Come to our next show." Yeah, uh, bring some friends. Hindsight being what it is, at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were actually pretty good. You know, we had an email list, so even if you didn't buy one of our shit or things or whatever, we would tell you when we were coming back. Right. And like, uh, hey, look, all I'm saying is, them temp companies have made trillions of dollars yeah. off of knowing your email address. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <sighs> if you're a musician and you're watching this and you don't do this at shows already, take the time. Email addresses. It, it, it's huge. Well, yeah. now, nowadays, just, yeah, just even like you know, what's your app? What's your what's your you know Twitter yeah. name or whatever? Because it makes a huge difference. People feel that that personal connection. Otherwise, you're just hoping. Yeah. It's just we're doing a gig. I hope that you come. hope you show up. Yeah. Meanwhile, by getting their name and their you know method of contact, you can say, "Hey, Tony," or "Hey, Susie," yeah. or whatever. Hope to see you at the next show. Word really? of mouth. No matter how much oh, crazy God. technology has gotten, word of mouth is the number one thing. You're right. Doing. And don't believe people who say, you give us this much money, we're going to make yeah, you yeah. huge. We're going to... That's only one mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so from you one, need a bunch of mouths. One big mouth. <laughs> yeah. So from it's like this fucking big. <laughs> so from talking about, you know, <laughs> certain vi- talking about certain venues and certain Fitness shows, we're moving on to... What's your favorite venue? Oh. Certainly not Whiskey Go-Go. Oh, yeah. hey, but that's the thing, is that it's like the I venue will tell itself you mine. Is... I'll tell you mine, and also it wraps in with my favorite show memory. House of Blues. 
Number one, they've got a sound person out front, and they got a sound person on stage, yeah. stage yeah. left, I believe. Yeah. They're talking to each other. You sound amazing to you and to the audience. Not only that, the green rooms are freaking nice. Every one of them has a shower. The main green room has a huge hood that vents whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Ten, do you remember that band that went in there and toked up? They walked in. They toked up. My wife was in the audience and smelled it. She's like, oh, I might have to leave. I walked in 10 minutes after they were done, and it couldn't smell a thing. But also, That's because it was all out there by the wife. But the other thing is, <laughs> it's my favorite show memory, because I had the rock star. I, I checked off, like, three things off my little rock star wish list thing. I, I got to play the House of Blues. My wife showed up. With yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I got to play and have the crowd actually, like, there was a crowd. And they responded. I mean, it wasn't a huge crowd, but, you know, there was a crowd. And I had a guy in front, and he did this to every band, apparently. Uh, Viridian, who also has been on the channel, they they played that show. They're good, and yes. I talked to their guitar player, and he, he's yeah. like, yeah, the, the kids did the same thing to me. He said, hey, can I have your pick? After I was done playing, I was like, yeah, go ahead, bink! I feel, yeah, all right, man! <laughs> and he <laughs> stuck on his forehead! <laughs> <laughs> but it was cool. I licked it first. And if I remember right, it was a pick. It was an Incubus pick. Incubus said, I don't know where I got this pick. I freak, somebody gave it to me. One side was um, Incubus, and on the other side was the a little drawing of the dr the singer's head as the head of a sperm. Right, cool. <laughs> I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> but that was the pick I, I tossed. Right there. But it's funny you say On that. a I child. Don't, I, I don't know anybody in particular, but I'm pretty sure, like, like I've had that done to me too. Like, where I had, like, somebody in the crowd say, throw me your pick. And I'm just like, there you go. Yeah, it's like, like, I wish it was monogram. Yeah, I wish right. it was ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but but it, it was really, that was one of those, somebody likes what I did. Yeah, and then I find out that oh, he did to the next band too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I felt like a used whore. <laughs> you know, exactly. but though, either either way, either way, it was a special moment for that kid. And, uh, like, yeah, it was a special for. Yeah, I mean, for me at least, it was right. a special moment for me. It, like that kid, whether regardless of that, whether or not, it felt right. good to me. Like, uh, but it was also sorry, but y'all, it was also important. It was it was special to me because my my wife and some family friends got to see what I do as opposed to just hey, here's the video. And they got, I, it was the best, I, I can't remember performing any better. Like, that was the best we sounded, and I did my parts right, and then I got to work the crowd and went, made it back to the pedals on time, and all that stuff. And, Which and, is a super rarity. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, and also, we got to open, so, House, it is, uh, House of Blues is one of those things, nobody's showing up late, generally, to House of Blues. No. It's not like the dive bar, it's not like another bar where... They kind of make it impossible, but... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you're getting everybody that's there, pretty much. So, I got to play for everybody that was there, and when I was done, I got to watch all my, a lot of my musical friends, and make new friends. Right. So, that was really cool. Um, he made new friends, but kept the old. Some were silver, and others were gold. <laughs> <laughs> To new friends, old friends, and everything in between. Cheers. Or, <laughs> as, as a family member is fond of saying, here's to you and here's to me, and remember we should disagree, then hell with you and here's to me. <laughs> uh, great. Um, favorite venue? My garage. Why? Because no one can tell me I suck. It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> aim, aim low, kids. Aim low. Oh, <laughs> like, like, always achieving your goals. It's my parents. My parents are like, shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. The only person mm -hmm. I'll ever hear telling me I suck or whatnot is my but parents. But your parents wouldn't do that. They'd say, have some chili dip. No, they would not. Yeah, dad, like, shut the fuck up. That sounds tor Trust terrible. Yeah, I don't want <laughs> Either get on meter <laughs> or get the fuck off the drink. Wait! Wait! <laughs> Wait! <laughs> that is not my tempo! <laughs> How about you, baby? Um, I, I have actually two. Um, He's gonna be like, yeah, it was that time I was playing this arena with 60,000. <laughs> <laughs> Good times! Uh, 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 I believe it was Staples. I'm really surprised, uh, I'm really surprised your favorite, favorite like, uh, uh, show memory wasn't from like, yeah, we played that, it went on tour with Adelita's Way. And, I know, I, there's a couple of them. Like, that they, uh, but so, like, my favorite venue. So, like, I. I, I like to have three. Okay. All right. So and now you the, all the know Brooklyn he's full of shit. I play at the Brooklyn Bowl. That was badass. I hear good things about Brooklyn Bowl. Yeah, it was amazing. The, the the staff, the stage crew took away well, you know, very good care of us mm -hmm. and they helped us out. The third one was, of course, Lost Radius. That was pretty badass. Don't know anything about that, but yeah, um, they're made they're amazing. And then um, playing at the Apollo Theater in Illinois. Uh, that was. I'm sorry. Did you say Illinois? Yeah, Illinois. Yeah. 
You're from Midwest, Peter. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> but I will slap him with this Cubs ball. <laughs> <laughs> We're outside. You had Boise. Yeah. You, you had freaking blue turf in your room. I'm originally from Portland, Oregon, actually. Yeah, yeah, you said. Yeah, I'm right next door to Boise. Okay. But yeah, like all, all, all three venues that played out were amazing. They were like really big. The the staff, the stage crew, the mansion was awesome. They 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 took they took care of us. Nice. It was That's great. Good. All right. Well, one more question. Okay. Uh, this is this is the uh, normally I go through like gear. What's your gear and all that? Mm. However, mm. you're still working that out. Yeah. Right. Mm. Still figuring that out. Um, well, these guys might be. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's pretend we're talking to new musicians now. Mm. Maintenance tips, and we're gonna skip over the change your strings, clean your frets, you know, tune your drum heads, all the usual crap. Any maintenance tips, either for your gear or you as a per as a musician or, or his name is Guitar Doctor Bob. Uh, <laughs> not he's first time absolutely he's amazing. Bob. He's not no. the first time he's been remembered. No, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Guitar Doctor Bob, forty dollars setups, bring him some strings. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, it's cool. amazing. I, I hear good things. I need to. I have some stuff I, to take to him. I have literally put two of his kids through college over the last fifteen <laughs> years. I'm not even kidding. Like, a, like, guy made, works wonders. Uh, eventually, like, you're gonna need to learn some of this stuff for yourself. Yeah. Um, if I had one piece of advice more than anything else for new musicians, is YouTube, until you figure out how to do it yourself, is intimation. Like, yes. you yeah. just, for the mother of God, figure out, and if you do not know what the word intimation is, then Google, Google it. <laughs> find out what that word is, yeah. and then type that word into YouTube and figure it out. Because, it, like, basically what it is, is once you get past the 12th uh, fret, uh, the octave repeats. And it's one of those things where it, uh, uh, like, it'll start being a little sharp or a little flat. And yep. you need to make sure that the upper notes are the same frequencies as the lower notes, or at least doubled. So 440 mm -hmm. is an A. 80 would be the 12th fret of whatever. So you need to make sure that it's lining up on exactly the double of whatever its previous note is. And, uh, like, because it, it doesn't matter how good you are, if you are out of tune, you are wrong. You are wrong. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you are yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and on that note, tuner pedals. Yes, it's a yes, thing! Or Go the, get a tuner pedal! Or the snark, or the little thing. No, don't tuner be, pedal. Don't be playing a tuning song while you're on live set. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, by, yeah, bypass it. Bypass yeah. it so nobody can hear you. Do you know tuning. why the big name guitarists have multiple guitars with them? It's so they don't have to tune. Okay. They can realize, okay, I need to change to a new guitar. Or this song requires drop D, or this song requires that. Different but changes. mostly it's <laughs> I have a couple that are all tuned to E or whatever we play it normally. And I don't that way you don't have to sit there, hang on. Ding, 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 ding. And that, the problem is, this guy's always in the key of J. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, this Put isn't this a, a blues jam in E, and he's over here in the key of J. And I'm like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> <laughs> drummers, drummers, it is possible to actually tune your drums. Yes, it is. It, it's a, a drum dial. We have drummers. drummers. Oh. Tune your drums. Yes. Oh, fuck that. I have zero advice for oh, that. Hold on, hold on. I call my buddy Sean. <laughs> but hold up, the difference is Sean knows his stuff. Sean knows his shit. But the difference is, for drum heads, you're not going to get the exact note you want because you got like eight, six dials on it, and you can't just match every yeah, single one. Granted, individual. and depending on where you hit on that particular drum pad, mm -hmm. it's slightly different. We, I get that. And same with cymbals. So yeah, but so every time I play a certain Jesus, part, I'm like, of J. All right, mm -hmm. telling you. Key like drum, key, drum keys have like six because I lose yeah. all my drum keys. Yeah. I lose every single uh, drum Put key. Put a drum key on your key ring. I lose that too. You lose your keys? Oh yeah. Sometimes it even looks okay. like a wrench. That looks like a penis. Here's, here's two. Here's two. <laughs> Put a key ring through one of the little metal things on the side of one of your drums. You're not going to lose your drums, hopefully. And you always have a drum key right there. I don't know. I lost a couple drum parts. Uh, I lost my small tom before, and I was like, "Where the?" Okay, I got, I I lose so then, let's move to drummer. What are your maintenance tips? Don't lose your drum key. Don't I lose see. your toms. No, don't. <laughs> so when, even though I haven't really officially toured, you yeah. got to keep your cymbals and your drums in a nice environment. Once you exchange from like cold to hot, 
My jump's already warping right now, and they're warping hard. But acclimation is, is a huge. You gotta set up early. Yeah. And, or, like, when I came back from California and I was playing with cymbals because they were yeah, cold there and it's hard. kind of warm over <laughs> here, one crack just like that because it was in the cold car for hours on end. So, don't, no. Don't. So, you don't have an actual, like, uh, hard shell uh, cymbal case? I'm too broke. Right. It's worth hard it. Hard shell. It's worth it. <laughs> it really you, know, is. you know who's got one? Cases. Good luck being big. You know who's got a hard <laughs> shell civil case? <laughs> Sean. Sean. <laughs> Sean has, and by the way, uh, Sean Flume, uh, if you ever need drumming, <laughs> just <Yes>. saying. <laughs> Outside of that, I, I gotta say, please don't uh, buy gold plated uh, bullshit from cables. Like gold yeah. plated, like oh, oh, electricity transfers from gold. Like yeah, but the <laughs> copper wiring in between doesn't change. Right. Uh, don't waste your money. Not even for recording. Buy, buy, uh, no, just... no, no, no. Just buy the normal cables. It's mm-hmm. the same electricity <laughs> transfer. It's the same bullshit. Don't waste your money. Get. I mean, go to a studio, a real studio. See what they have. They're not gonna have any of that gold plated crap. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So don't waste your money on that shit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yep. And and honestly. Learn how to ca- learn how to coil cables. Oh, that's important. Over and oh, under- I, I didn't even think of oh, it. Like, I, 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 got, I got one important essential. So when you're in a band, communicate. Because yeah. a lot of bands today don't communicate, and that's how they disband. You need to set up a Kada! And no, if you comes <laughs> back, then you are responding and you know, everything's wow. good. No, not even that. Like, You're supposed to do the tookie tookie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so tookie tookie do not work. <laughs> no, that's why it didn't call it. It doesn't work. So, any, any maintenance tips for the bass players? Uh, uh, study. Guitar Dr. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> that would do it like that, but like study, because there's a lot more to bass playing than just, you know, actually Keep following. Sitting in the pocket. Yeah, and actually following a stage of pocket, following a guitar player. Do you know, listen to your drummer, get in sync with him. And there, yeah, that pretty yep. much all there is to it. Yep. I do, I'm, I'm, I'm a bass player too, so I'm yeah. gonna chime in with something. Mm-hmm. Sorry. No, it's uh, fine. It's fine. Uh, uh, learn how to not step on toes. There you go. That'd be a good yeah. uh, piece of advice. There's a reason. Know, know your row. Slow, slow know your, your row, row, dog. Yeah, but no, it's not <laughs> only that. This is like more in reference to gear. Um, so like. At some point in time, especially if you want to do this for a living, you have to actually understand how, like, a frequency spectrum works and, like, where you're supposed to fit into all of that. You can and hear there's it. Good a, good yeah, point. and, like, there's a reason why, like, a lot of, um, like, if you ever get recording software or whatever, there will be a, a, a setting, a, like, a preset setting that is, like, scoop it or whatever, and it's because, and basically what that does is it leaves you a little bit of, uh, 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 like, the bass and the treble, but it gets rid of all the mids, and that's the reason, the reason for that is because, like, uh, depending on where your vocal range is, as well as guitars and stuff of that nature, fit into that mid-range, so if you are, as a bass player, are there, then you are literally muddying the hell up all of your stuff. Yeah, there's nothing worse than hearing a band, you're like, I know this would sound awesome, except all I can hear is a freaking bass player. Yeah, just no over time. Or yeah. all I can hear is the kick drum vamped. Or all I, I can hear vamped, is... Great band, yeah. I love vamped, though. I, um, I, what I, I found in, in vamped, particularly, if you're in a place that's like, the, the kick drum is through the chest, and it's yeah. bass, 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 what you do is stand right up at the front of the stage, your legs are blocking the subs, and all of a sudden I can hear lyrics. Hey! hey. Oh my god, there was a singer. I got a singer. Yeah. I saw. I saw uh, are you familiar You're with Tyrants by Night? I love you. Uh, are you guys familiar with Tyrants by Night? Yeah. Names ringing. Oh my god, go see them. I, I'm trying to get them on the show. They're trying to get on the show. Um, they're, they're, it, it's scheduled, you know. But they uh, are. Imagine if Metallica came out today. Oh. Like, you're hearing, you're like, this is so reminding me of Metallica. But it's so good. But now, now here's my thing: is that like, because uh, like I always felt like Metallica's thing was that like in the '80s when everybody was coming out, like, look, they were taking rock and roll and like metal and stuff like that, yeah, and they were just going in this direction, which added all the extra to it, all the hair yeah. and all of this right. and all of that. He, he wasn't he wasn't screaming at the or he wasn't yelling at the beginning of this. Yeah, the way. and then Metallica comes out and they were like, "Yeah, we're not going to do any of that. We're just going to give you some of this." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, 
It was none of the, the fancy, pretty shit. It was just the nitty and the gritty. So are you saying that this band I'm saying I is have, coming out? I have not enjoyed myself watching a metal band perform so much as I have Tyrants by Night. They actually uh, opened a show. They did it like it was vamped. They had the curtain. Before the curtain opened, there was music. Nice. And, and they had the, and everybody's just like, <laughs> and they opened it and it was like, <laughs> you see the drool. Yeah, and they, and, and they did it right. But also, um, they, uh, they, Vile Child actually uh, was playing that night too. Oh, yeah. There was yeah. another band, I can't remember, uh, you'll have to see the video, like here, uh, that I did reviewing uh, Tyrants by Night. But, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. But, um, there, was, there was another band, I can't remember off the top of my head, but the lead guitarist had a Flying V white guitar and a matching Flying V violin that he would think, and he would be. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, That's what am I cool. seeing? This is amazing! Uh, I wish I was talented. Uh, <laughs> right? Well, gentlemen, Me too. it is time to make the music. Cheers. The music! Click, 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 clunk. I want to thank yeah. Hades Hand. Are you going to be okay? You pounded that Mountain Dew, bro. Bro, oh, are you yeah. going to drop a 30-second note? It's fired up, man! <laughs> it's not 30 seconds, it's like 54 right. notes. <laughs> 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 <Okay. Yeah. laughs> but they're going to grace us with one of their new songs upstairs in front of the guitar wall, so stick around, and thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you right upstairs in room six. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba. Ba! <laughs>
thank Hades Hand for coming by. It was a great interview and a great performance. And happy Halloween to all of you out there, or happy Samhain, or happy Hallow's Eve, or whatever. If you want to support the content you like, please consider clicking the Patreon link down in the description, or buy a CD. In the meantime, if you'd like to see more music like this from them, click here. If you'd like to subscribe, here. click here. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say bye, guys. Bye! Bye! <laughs>